I want to repeat <laughs> for the sake of. So we must, we must believe this, and we must explain this to the. We must believe this. We must explain this to our people. What is liturgy? This is where the church, <laughs> you know, since I am mostly working in Germany, a German called, what is his name? The Protestant uh, Martin Luther. He was an Augustinian monk. But what has he learned from Augustine? <laughs> he, as an Augustinian monk, have not at all understood the teaching of Augustine or teaching of the church. So I have a comparison with another Augustinian, that is Joseph Ratzinger. As a priest, Joseph Ratzinger eaten the whole teaching of St. Augustine. City of God and my confession was like Bible Joseph Ratzinger was carrying. Every all teaching of Augustine, particularly the teaching about the church, was so dear to this priest, Joseph Ratzinger. The result was what a great pillar of faith he became. So much rooted in faith and rooted in the love of church, rooted in the sacraments. That is the sharpness and the loving teaching of whole St. Augustine's teaching. I have done a little research in catechism. <laughs> it is St. Augustine's teaching prevails more than any other church fathers here. It is easy to understand and the last, there is a directory. And in that we can see how St. Augustine taught the love of church and love of Christ and the love of Holy Spirit is so much united. Without loving the church, you cannot love Christ. Without loving the church, you cannot receive Holy Spirit. And the liturgy has to be understood. Okay, so because he, the Martin Luther, did not relate in this way, or at that time, the universal church did not teach enough the catechism. Therefore, these poor people who have no understanding about these things, when Martin Luther said like this, they all went into his way. That was the cause of such a big division in the church. Even now, many of our all the Protestant pastors really attack the Catholics. They may, of course, they are also doing evangelization, but they love to come and grab the sheep of the Catholics. And they poor people believe it because we have not given them the teaching. When somebody came and said to a Catholic, see the baptism you received is not the real baptism. You are not immersed in the water. You know Jesus, when he received baptism, he immersed fully. So you have to again immerse fully, then only your baptism is valid. Oh, okay, okay. They very much fallen into that. But they, our people should understand the baptism what we receive is not the baptism of John the Baptist. The baptism what we receive is in the blood of Christ, came from the side of Christ when he offered 
himself up as a salvific sacrifice. So baptism is relating to the salvific sacrifice. So paragraph 766, in 766 says that church is born from the side of Jesus. 766. The church is born primarily of the Christ's total self-giving of our salvation anticipated in the institution of the Eucharist and fulfilled on the cross. The origin and growth of the church are symbolized by the blood and water which flowed from open side of the crucified Jesus. That is our baptism. Not the baptism of River Jordan. Baptism what we give is a sacrament. The sacraments, yeah. For it was from the side of Christ as he slept the sleep of death upon the cross that there came forth the wondrous sacrament of the whole church. Church itself is a sacrament. But both these came from the after the salvific sacrifice Jesus offered from the poured blood and water. And our poor people do not know this. So when they talk on this subject, immediately they are fallen into a wrong teaching. Okay, now coming to the economy of sacramental economy, in this, yeah, the, that, that one line, you should write it down. Christ manifests, makes present, communicates. That is the liturgy. In the liturgy, Christ manifests, Christ makes present, Christ is dispensed, dispensed. These three things, once we understand our experience of the liturgical celebration will be very profound, very profound. And the last sentence here is, he acts through the sacraments. He acts through the sacraments. In what the common tradition of the East and West, the Eastern and Western liturgical tradition says, the sacramental economy. That is the sacramental economy. This is the communication or dispensation. Dispensary. Remember our dispensary. <laughs> dispensation. Now, you can write down this. Of the fruits of Christ's Paschal mystery. The fruits generated of the Paschal mystery, that is passion, death and resurrection. That fruits of the Paschal mystery in the celebration of the church sacramental liturgy is dispensed, dispensed. And so, coming, I wanted to say that after Jesus' resurrection, before Jesus' passion, he instituted the sacraments, but after Jesus' passion, death and resurrection, he celebrated the sacrament. This is how you should celebrate. So liturgy already developed with exactly how you should celebrate is done by Jesus himself. As an example, you see the, the, the Emmaus journey. In that Emmaus journey, we can see a solemn celebration of the liturgy with more than five or six readings, a reading from Genesis, reading from the book of Deuteronomy, reading from the book of uh, prophets, 
reading from Psalms, and that that is what he says. He was he was interpreting the scripture, so the liturgy of the world was going on, a long liturgy. Then, but still they could not recognize the risen Lord. <laughs> he was walking with them, speaking to them. The risen Lord. And they were so sad because they thought this Jesus would be, but that Jesus was killed and buried, is gone. They were so sad. And that Jesus, who was killed and buried three days back, is risen and walking with them. That is liturgy. Do this in memory of me means the whole life of Christ is reenacted and we are walking with him in the holy sacrament. We are walking with him. And at the end, he came, he sat with them at the table. Now, it is not written what exact prayers Jesus did there. Surely they were following after that the same thing. He took the bread, gave thanks and praise. How he gave thanks and praise? He have used several words. He used several prayers. He used several psalms. That is a matter of detail. The apostles or the disciples at that time understood and they continued later on. And he broke the bread and gave to them. Now their eyes open. They recognize him. Hey, he is risen. Hey, this is our Lord. <laughs> but he disappeared. Where has he gone? Where has he gone? Why he disappeared? This risen Lord become that bread. Or rather the bread become the risen Lord. And the risen Lord entered inside them. Inside them. That is how their eyes opened. That is how he dispensed himself. So in the liturgy, Christ is revealed. Christ makes present himself and dispensed. Now they were so excited. They said, now the evangelization begins. These apostles or disciples left Jerusalem. What is the use of staying in Jerusalem? Let's go back. All promises has gone waste. They were so cut to heart and they were, they abandoned their mission and going back to their home. But now they say, we must go back to Jerusalem right now because we saw him. He is risen. He is truly risen. Hallelujah. And they ran to Jerusalem back and began to evangelize, began to proclaim. John Paul II, Pope Paul VI, Benedict, Pope, all Holy Fathers say that is the evangelization. Proclaim the risen Lord through the power of the risen Lord, through the person of the risen Lord, Moved by the spirit of the risen Lord. That's it. That's it. So when we experience that risen Lord, we cannot keep quiet. We cannot keep quiet. That's why Peter and John says, how can we keep quiet? The, the, the Sanhedrin says, you should not say that word Jesus again. Okay? Sorry. We cannot keep quiet. We cannot. We cannot keep quiet because we are experiencing the risen one in us. 
practice evangelization. It is not a, it is not an organizational matter. It is such a great spiritual spur, a spur, a spontaneous spiritual work by the risen Lord. It is not in our control. So, we must recognize only through sacrament a real experience of the resurrection we can perpetuate, perpetuate. So we ourselves should have that experience. Then our sacrament celebration will be something different. Something different. First of all, we will spend time before the celebration reflecting that the liturgy. So the liturgy, as we must know, it is the, it is the, it is the property, it is the treasure of the Holy Catholic Church. So Sacrosanctum Concilium, the dogmatic constitution on the liturgy. You must read it, you must learn it. How great things are mentioned there. Okay, you know it. Or others must read that. Sacrosanctum Concilium, the the Second Vatican document on liturgy. And when you really into this understanding of the reenactment that you as a priest is reenacting as Christ as a lamb, not only Christ as a, as a priest who is offering the sacrament, that is only one part, the most, the most important reenactment is you as a priest not only become a priest like Jesus who celebrate the sacrament, but more than that, you become Christ who is the victim, victim of it there. I remember in one of the priest retreats in Mumbai, there were Latin and Syro Malabar priests were there. So after I explained the holy liturgy in which I had to explain this aspect about that the priest is not uh, is Christ, not only not only the one who is celebrant, celebrating the sacrifice, but Christ who is offered as a victim. So that day we celebrated as a, a Siro Malbar liturgy. The priest who celebrated from the beginning was in tears, crying. Sometimes he was sobbing and crying. So the priests were little, others were little disturbed. Why is he going out of control? They were just looking here and there. He is out of control. He tied, he tried to wipe off often his tears, but it is flowing and flowing. The words he speak is not becoming eligible. Eligible, he it is. So at the end of the celebration, after uh, changing his vestment, he came and apologized. My dear brother priests, I apologize for what happened. I was completely out of control. But I want to tell you, these are his words. I am a priest for 38 years. But today, I really, really, really understood I am not only a priest who offers the sacrament, I am the victim. Victim. So throughout the Eucharistic celebration, I was on the cross as a victim. 
I could experience the pain and the passion of Christ. I was controlling my maximum not to burst out with the loud cries. But it has become a unique experience for me. When Padre, Saint Padre Pio, he takes sometimes three hours for liturgy, the people criticize some of the critics. He says, I cannot control the time of Jesus' passion. And he said, somebody said, Father, how could you stand three hours with the stick matter, with the pain of the stick matter? He said, I am not standing. I was hanging on the cross. My dear fathers, we must celebrate with the more preparation, preparation. We must celebrate with more preparation. We must recognize this aspect. You are such a highest, you are in such a highest level in the church. You are not like Christ, you are Christ. And particularly in the time of the liturgy, you become the victim, the victim. And with that understanding, you must prepare little more before you celebrate the liturgy, sometimes reading the scripture, understanding that day's scripture, connecting the Scriptures, that is the Old Testament, Psalms and the New Testament, you should connect. And you must believe the liturgy is a reenactment of the same event of Jesus, which has validity even before thousand years to deliver the people of Israel through this liturgy. So it also has validity to deliver the people even after thousand years. Once a woman asked me, Thomas Paul, we pray, Lamb of God who take away, our time is over, eh? Huh? Okay. Okay, I'll stop now. We pray, Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What is the meaning? Sin of the world? So a German lady, she says, that means even the people who are going to be born, going to do sin, even their sin, Jesus is taken over. Exactly. Huh? I never believed that. You believe now. And you go for a confession and say, my lack of faith. Our first sin is our lack of faith. So I explained her, Jesus is not going to come again to take away their sin. His one sacrifice is an eternal sacrifice which redeemed the whole humanity from the original sin. So I told her, even before Jesus' passion, thousand years back, the Israelites were redeemed through this sacrifice. So also, all the generations who are going to be born going to commit sin, even that sin Jesus has taken over. Oh, that is excellent. Ah, yes, yes. So she went for a confession and confessed this lack of faith 
and then he came back and say oh, now i feel very strong we feel very strong when we understand this mystery with its full velocity with its full plan of god he is the lamb of god who took away the sin of the world sin of the world even those people who are going to do sin so we we are we are afraid to say don't say all these things that people will keep on doing sin that is our lack of faith when we proclaim this when we celebrate this then they will be delivered from their sins and they will be transformed to a new humanity a risen humanity a redeemed humanity they cannot do then the sin that should be our faith so my dear friends let us conclude now this this all what i said is for the point of evangelization evangelization is not simply speaking some words of jesus and making a prosperity for their solutions no christ mystery of christ must be proclaimed evangelii nunciandi redem doris missio gaudium spec evangelii gaudium all this is speaking and teaching us the mystery of christ must be known we may make some entertainment and make jokes and all these things won't do not convert the soul a soul will receive conversion not because of our words of words but through the mystery of christ penetrate into and touch them so saint teres even as a 14 year old girl she believed jesus already took the sin of the humanity so this triple murderer prancini even he his sin jesus has taken over and jesus will give him pardon and and forgiveness so with that that confident this 14 year old girl prayed oh lord i believe you have taken the sins of prancini have mercy on him today he is going to be hanged to death before he is he die he may be given a chance of repentance she says i feel confidence that you have taken over his sins on the cross and i cry and i believe you will not refuse the cry of this little child you will grant him mercy and at that day was the execution of prancini the police was taking him to the guillotine there were about 30000 people in france to see this event because he was a very big sinner he did a triple murder murder which shook the whole france and everybody was telling yes kill him kill him kill him but teres was praying for him and the police the priest was behind him for a confession but he refused now that priest is standing there as a protocol to stand anybody who dies the priest would stand with a crucifix near the guillotine that is a practice in the prison now as prancini's head was to put inside the guillotine by the police he draw the head they forced him he said no please wait give me one more one minute and he turned to the priest he said please bring that crucifix please bring the crucifix and the priest was so happy he ran with the crucifix to the guillotine 
and Pranzini took the crucifix and kissed him three times. And he was crying in repentance and gave back. Now the priest has blessed him. And then he gave his head to be executed. Now this news came in the newspaper. And seeing this newspaper, Therese was so happy and crying in tears fell down in the newspaper. And she said, this is my call. This is my call to save the sinners through my offering and prayer. That was the first important moment of his, her call. I have made an animation film on this. It is available in the YouTube. You must watch this. I wrote the script sitting in the house of St. Therese in that room where she prayed for Prince Sini. And all what is written is from her biography. And quoting that Pope Francis in this document said, that is the confidence we need. A childlike confidence, Jesus has already taken over our sins. Sins of the humanity. And in that confidence, we have to offer the liturgy. Oh Lord. Let us praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, we will have a long break now, but I have an inspiration to tell you because it was a workshop, we did not plan a confession. But now I feel, considering that woman's confession, that she confessed that she did not believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God who already took away the sin of the humanity. She thought only the present people. And she said after confession, she, her faith increased. So if any of you at this moment <clears throat> want a confession, you can approach any of the priests or the priests themselves can also confess as a matter of fact here now. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So we will 